Hello all and welcome. It feels like it's been ages since I've spoken to you, um, but I thought I'd do a quick update on the things that I've made in April for you. So I've got some sewing items and a little bit of knitting towards the end. So if that's not of any interest, I'm hoping I'll be able to put a sort of chapter in. And if it is of interest, you'll be able to skip to that bit. And if not, I hope you enjoy the sewing part. So a little bit of a quick life update, first of all, uh, for those of you who are interested. I finished work at uh, the beginning of April and I thought after I'd finished work, I thought I'd have loads of time to concentrate on sewing and some making some garments up. But after I finished work and I was speaking to mum about this, um, I seem to have lost sort of motivation a little bit as to what I wanted to make. A lot of the garments that I have made in the past, sort of the blouses and the dresses, I've made to wear to work and I've got loads in my wardrobe. So I was a little bit lost as to what I sort of wanted to make. Um, but I was taking part in the So April Blouse 23 um, challenge that's been running on Instagram. So I knew that I wanted to make a couple of blouses. And towards the end of the month, the motivation seemed to have crept back in a little bit. And I attempted to make another blouse, which was a total fail. Oh, there's so many mistakes. I will show you it a little bit later. But yeah, but I've got at least two and a, and a dress on the way. But there we go. So I'll show you those. But uh, I thought once I'd finished work, I thought, right, I need to get on top of some of the jobs in the house that I haven't been able to get to while I've been working. And we have wooden window frames and they're desperately in need of um, a bit of maintenance and, up and some uh, sort of titivating. So I thought, right, I'll sand them all down and varnish them all. Uh, so I'd done the dining room and the study, got to the kitchen and I'm stood outside. It was a dry day, cold, but it was dry for a change. And I'm stood outside in my penny because obviously you need your penny on when you're sanding um, and my coat and I sanded all the window down and then Andrew came in through the back door and a gust of wind blew and it blew all the sanding dust straight in my face and in my eyes. Oh my Lord. And of course I hadn't got safety goggles on. Um, I didn't think it was too bad, but I went to bed that night and there was a shooting pain in my eyes, especially my right eye. And I woke up in the morning and I said to Andrew, I said, I'm really suffering. I thought, I actually thought I was going to end up in A&E at one point in time. And he rushed off, bless him, to um, the chemist and got me some eye drops and some eye wash. So I did that. And then all day on Wednesday, I'm sat there um, on, on the settee with a towel over my eyes, just trying to soothe them a bit. Luckily, they've gone down. Um, but yeah, don't don't sand without safety goggles on. It's not a good idea. I even got my glasses on because I'm thinking I needed to sort of, but I must have popped them on the top of my head as I do and just at the wrong time when Andrew came through. But anyway, anyway, that's beside the point. Right. Okay. So <laughs> enough of that. Let's get on to some sewing. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the Fitzroy blouse, which is this one here. Let me bring Mabel in. Now I have made this one before. Um, if you look at, I think it's my was it the March ones, end of March, what I made in March? I made a white linen one that Amy took a fancy to and there's some pictures of Amy. I'll, in fact, I'll pop some video in of, of Amy wearing it. Uh, so she took a fancy to that one and that is now quite safely in her wardrobe. But I did have this one cut out. When I went to Make at 140 in March, I bought the fabric um, there, which is a lovely Robert Kaufman, Kauf, Kauf, Kaufman? Um, linen cotton mix. It's 55% linen, 45% cotton. And it's absolutely beautiful fabric to work with. It really behaves itself. This pattern itself goes from sizes zero up to 20, but it also has bust sizes. So it goes from A, B, C and D. And it also has options for hip sizes as well. So within the zero to 20, you've got quite a lot of variables to choose from to get your fit. I went for a size 10 with a C bust cup and it comes out at a 41 and a half inch finished 
bust measurement, uh, which seems to fit me quite well on this one. It's got enough ease in it for me, but not too much. So the pattern is fairly simple to make. You've got a choice with this one of sleeve options, which I'll show you in a second. But I really like the wraparound collar. So you've got one piece that goes all the way around and is joined at the neck seam here. And then you've got an inverted pleat to give you a little bit more ease at the back. It's got a split hem here. And then your buttons down the front, bust starts and your buttons down the front. Now the sleeve options, you can either have a standard sleeve placket, don't talk to me about plackets, we'll go into that in a minute, um, or, and I've made loads of blouses and shirts, these pleated sleeves. Now this was one of the reasons that I really was drawn to this pattern was this detail on the sleeving here, and I really, really like it. I think with this one, because the fabric's slightly heavier, stay there Mabel, because the fabric's slightly heavier, I think you could wear it open in the summer with like a little shift blouse or something underneath, um, or equally just wear it as it is worn like this. So yeah, really, really pleased with that one. Um, it's it's come out really well. So this was one of the entries for my So April 23 challenge. And then I wanted to make something completely different. And um, this is a pattern that I've had in my pattern stash for quite some time. And I've been waiting to sort of make it up. And I think it's one of those patterns where it's a bit of a statement piece. And um, I think it's going to look absolutely fantastic on holiday. I did say to Andrew, I'll get it for you in a second. You'll probably see it behind me there. Um, I said to Andrew, this blouse needs to go on holiday. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He didn't listen very much. But yeah, let me go and grab it for you. Bear with me one second. So this is the Trend Patterns Ruffle shirt. And I've had this pattern quite a while, actually, and didn't, didn't know what I wanted to make it in. Um, but I've chosen one of my favourite fabrics, which is a Lady McElroy Savannah print fabric. Um, I will show you what I'm wearing in a second, um, because I'm double savannahed today. And I absolutely love this it's swishy and it's summery um it was an interesting construction let's say right so let's start with sizes so size wise it goes from a size 8 to a size bear with 22 so 8 to 22 but there's a quite a lot of ease in this pattern it's very generous very sort of billowy and floaty and i thought it's great for summer so you're Garment measurements go from 43, so the size 8 is a 43 inch bust finish measurement, to a 57. I made a size 12 in this. Um, it's okay in this pattern, but I think in, I will show you the other pattern, which is another trend patterns, which I also made in a size 12. That was way too big. Um, so I think I'd need to size down in the other pattern. But in this particular pattern, I like that sort of floaty, billowy feel. It's quite fabric hungry so it takes between at 140 width it takes between 2.8 and 3 meters of fabric to make this let me see if i can sh bring mabel back a bit and i will put video footage in so you can see it in action but i just love the details on this this so let's start with the sleeve so you've got this enormous great cuff here with one button closer Closer, closing, closure. <laughs> and you can either wear it 
like that open or you can fold the cuff back on and on itself like that um you've got standard sort of collar at the front and that's about the only thing that's standard on it you've got a yoke at the back and it's um sort of like a burrito but not quite you it is a double yoke but um they don't burrito it in the pattern and then you've got at the bottom it's sort of like the bottom part is like this and with these big ruffles on the bottom of it my mother hates a ruffle um i think on this it really works well so you've got this sort of hem you've got one long part here and then another sort of longer part at the back here and then it's just got this sort of amazing movement to it the pattern pieces themselves are really interesting construction so a lot of the pieces are cut out on a single layer so you've got the front here uh the, the left and the right front and the back are all cut on single layers and then you construct it sort of the, the, the actual shirt part itself at the at the at the main sort of body of it is fairly sort of straightforward and then you add these sections of ruffle along the bottom here let me show you i did sort of scratch my head a little bit in one of the pattern pieces and had to sort of lay it out on the floor just to see which way around it went. Let me see if I can find the one is his. So, so for example, this is this is the front left shirt. So you just need to really sort of stick to where your grain line is so you can see that you've got the sleeve here and attach the yoke here um if it was the back piece that i was scratching my head at you can see the size of the pattern pieces so this is the center back piece here so you cut it on the grain that way and then i had to lay this out and it says attach the yoke here so it's just and then you've got your right right side seam here and your sleeve here so it's just really sort of unusual construction um but yeah it came together quite well actually didn't have other than other than actually sort of cutting it out what i did was i laid the fabric out on the floor and then scratched my head a little bit about the patterns and paste the patterns on the fabric to make sure i got enough fabric and then cut them out sort of individually just check and double checked and then as i was constructing it i had to put the pattern piece on the floor just to see the markings on the um or the instructions on the pattern piece just to make sure i was attaching them in the right place but yeah it came together really well and i really really like this so as a double savannah hang on a second let me see if I can move back and show you. Now, these are a pair of, and they're too big, you can see here. These are a pair of Sew Over It Ultimate Trousers, and I've made quite a few pairs of these. And you can see I've lost a little bit of weight since I made these. These were the ones I think I've mentioned previously, but I think I just need to adjust the darts in the back here and just bring it in a little bit and then they should fit okay <laughs> but yeah I've got a couple of other pairs that I've made I've made oops <laughs> this happens quite often as you can see right honestly right so this is the other pair and again they're up here because they need altering so they're all made in the same size and they all need the same adjustments to them. And these, this fabric was from Sew so Over It, I think, ages and ages ago. Um, and I haven't actually worn these because I made them and I made them sort of late summer and didn't wear them and then went to put them on earlier on. I can't remember when. Um, and they're too big. So they need adjusting as well. Right. On to, shall I even fail till last? <laughs> no, 
no, we're talking trend patterns. So I'm going to go on to my fail now. Uh, oh, mess. Bear with me. This is the Trend Patterns box pleat shirt that I'd had my eye on for a little while and I thought it looks really sort of elegant, classy sort of shirt, this one. Printed the pattern out. The sizing is the same as the ruffle shirt. Um, the pattern pieces, oh my Lord. So this is the front left so the front left and the front right are fairly similar look at all those markings on there so <laughs> you basically you, you make box pleats in the bottom of the shirt you see the markings along the bottom there so you make box pleats and the markings at the bottom and then you match those up with the markings along the top to give you your box but you have to excuse the state of this it's not ironed because i got annoyed with it um all right just not better okay so you've got your box please going on here now that was a bit of head scratching to do that there and then you basically where the markings are on the pattern piece you put little sewing marks or stitching marks in just to hold the pleats together so i'm not quite sure whether the center one is in the right place because the center one overlaps the other two so i managed to get that in and done although when i came to actually the shoulder seam here because you've got all these if you don't get them spot on at the top here, all those markings along the top there, if you don't get that spot on, then your shoulder seam itself isn't straight. So I cut it off. I matched it up against the yoke, cut it off. I thought it'll work, it'll be fine. So that was number one. Number two, I put the box pleat in the wrong way around. <clears throat> so it should actually be... that way around but when i was ironing it, it this is just a multitude of errors this blouse when i was ironing it i got a mark from the iron there so i thought right okay put the pleat on the in, put that on the inside and put the it will be fine with the box pleat on the back but then the biggest mistake i made and this is don't sew when you're tired and don't sew in a rush so i've made loads of blouses i've made loads of plackets i've made loads so one sleeve fine no problem at all this sleeve sewed in i've done all the placket put it in the placket's on the wrong side it's on the top it should be on the other side of it and what i did was um i had put the pattern piece on the table and you put a mark in from the bottom of the, the um sleeve up to uh, to where you're going to cut in order to insert the placket so i'd put one sleeve on and the pattern piece on top and then i'd flip the fabric and for some bizarre reason i also flipped the pattern piece 
don't ask. So I ended up with the placket and the cut on the top of the sleeve instead of the bottom. Now I've had a, I put this on Instagram going, ah. I had a couple of suggestions. One lady said to me, um, forgive me if it was a man, said, can you do it? Can you reverse the sleeve? Is it the same? Is the fabric the same on the inside as it is um, on the outside? It's a definite possibility because it's the same. So I could take the cuff off, undo the sleeve, re-sew it up on, that, on the wrong side, if you like, and then I could, I don't think there's that much difference in the sleeve head itself, and then attach it that way. So I'm going to try that first of all and see if that works. I don't think you can see, in fact, I'm looking at it here, and I don't think the camera's going to pick it up, but that's the, in, that's the wrong side, that's the inside. And I don't think there's, you can see from the naked eye, you'll be able to see that it was inside out on that sleeve. The other option is I put it back in, I take the cuff off the bottom here and I cut both sleeves at the placket there and then try and do some sort of bit of gathering or put the, put the cuff back on, leave it open, do something along those lines. So it basically makes it a three quarter length sleeve. You would notice it if I put it back in in the way that it is, you would notice it and I would notice it and I would know that the, the, the opening was on the wrong side of the sleeve because this it's just let me put it on and you can see so when you've got it on it's here instead of being on that side like that so it's just a total mess um so yeah so it's not gone into the naughty corner yet but uh, that was the complete and utter fail <laughs> And then lastly, sort of sewing wise, let me just grab it for you, is an almost completed dress. Notice I am avoiding saying the word. I've forgotten how to say it. Pleiades, ple that one. Um, so this was the one that I was doing the test patterns for. So I've almost finished it. I've got the buttonholes are in and sewn. Um, I just need to put the buttons on and then decide what I'm going to do with it's hemmed. Bonus. Um, I just need to decide what I'm going to do with the cuffs. Now, in the other two that I've made, um, one, I just did a straight cuff and turned it over and finished it like that. The second one, um, I put some elastic in it, just to sort of gather it in slightly. But this one, I'm thinking I might actually put a cuff on the bottom of it, uh, just to finish it off a little bit more. But I'm really pleased with how this one's come out. And as soon as I've got the buttons on um, and finish the cuffs off, I will show you. But there we go. So that's that one finished. So that's the end of what I've made oh I did make some trousers for Amy so I'll put a pic quick picture in um she asked me I've probably made about 10 pairs of these now it's the saguaro pants she wears them for work so I got some um just a lighter weight sort of cotton for her from my local shop and she has to have them in navy blue for work but um she really liked the double gauze ones but after sort of lots of what and I'll be washing these on a on a sort of twice weekly basis but after quite a lot of washing they they lose their color a little bit um so she wanted some lighter ones for the summer so i've made her another pair of saguaro pants they really take me no time at all to make up those now um because i've made so many for her but she's asked me for a couple of things she's asked me for some shorts for summer for wearing for work and the style she wants are pretty much the same as the saguaro but shorts and i'm thinking well what I might do is take one of the older pairs of trousers that I've made her, just cut them off at short length and see how she feels. And if they're if they're suitable, if she likes those, then it's a win-win. I'll just shorten the pattern and make her some shorts using the saguaro and just cut the leg length off. But it's that sort of style she wants. So she wants a sort of a, a gathered top. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to have the drawstring in it, but sort of elasticated around the top. She definitely wants pockets in 
because who doesn't? Um, but just short for summer. So that's one thing she's asked me to make. The other thing, which is testing me, she wants me to make her a swimming costume, a bikini. I have never made a swimming costume, let alone a bikini. So I'm not sure about that one, but I will let you know if uh, if we get anywhere with that one. But yeah, she's got a definite idea in mind as to what she wants. She wants a sort of a higher cut sort of bikini bottom um, and then just sort of a triangle. The top, I think, will be fairly easy because it's just sort of a triangle sort of top she wants. But um, yeah, that could be a bit of a challenge, but it might be an interesting one. Right. I'm going to sign off from sewing now and just show you a little bit of what I've been uh, knitting. So if that's not of any interest to you, I hope you've enjoyed what I've made so far and I will catch up with you again very soon. But if you're interested in what I've been knitting, um, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so the first thing I've finished this month is the rosehip sweater, which is from this lovely book, Strands of Joy. I've had this book for a little while actually, and I had this uh, wanted to make this for absolutely ages. It's made up in um, non superwash from Vicky from West Green Loft Yarns, and I've shown it before but here's the finished sweater so you've got some colour work across the yoke here and if you can see it it's, can you pick out the roses in it and then you've got a little bit of colour work along the bottom and then on the sleeves around the colour and I just put a little knot of wool in at the back here it's got short rows so you've got the shaping at the back um but i just put a little knot of wool in at the top here this little bow um just in case i can't find out which is the back but yeah i'm really pleased with this one so it's washed blocked and ready to wear so that was my first finished one um and then i started a ranunculus this has been an incredibly, it's Midori Hiroshi, I think, um, who, if I pronounce that correctly. Uh, this has been an incredibly popular pattern. Um, I haven't got, I've got a picture there. And you can make this one, there's been so many people who've made this one. You can make it in different weights of yarn. Um, I've made it in both a a lighter weight sort of four ply held with mohair and I've also the recent one I've made is in um, a knitting for olive heavy merino which is a, probably around about a worsted weight yarn so mm, DK-ish thereabouts but there's so many different size options in this pattern and so many different yarns you can use it's an incredibly versatile pattern so I've made one previously and this is in a four ply held with mohair. So it's just a quite a little short, but it's a really nice sort of, and it's such a nice pattern to make. And then you've got um, <laughs> bind off, what's it called? Oh, one of those. Um, it's not an Italian bind off. Oh, for goodness sake. I can't remember, menopause brain. Um, a bind off <laughs> cuffs. <laughs> I called bind off. There we go. Uh, yeah, on the cuffs there, and then just a bit of ribbing at the bottom. So that's the one I'd made in the mohair. So, and then this is one. It's not quite finished. This one. Um, I had this yarn in my stash, and I'd made it up in another sweater that I was trying, didn't like it, pulled it back down again. That's the great thing about knitting as opposed to sewing. If you mess up when you're sewing, you've messed up. If you mess up when you're knitting, you can sort of rip it out and start again. So this is um, the heavier weight one, but you can see the yoke pattern there. This is not blocked and it's not finished yet, but that is the yoke pattern. It's quite a simple pattern to make. I think the hardest part is getting the, getting the um, when you start off with the cast on. Uh, and again, finished off at the bottom, the ends aren't sewn in, but finished off at the bottom. And then I'm just waiting for one more ball of yarn to come so I can finish off 
the body. There we go. And then over the weekend, I started on a pattern called the Cumulus Tea, which I think have I brought it up with me? I thought I had. I'll put a picture in because I can't find I thought I brought the pattern up with me. Um, but it's not there. And this is sort of one extreme to the other from the heavy merino to three ply. Which is uh, Sanders Garn, Tyner, Lind Tyner, something like that. Um, it's so soft and delicate. But it's not, it's knit, I'm knitting it on 3.25 millimeter needles. So it, it's a, just like a little summery t shirt top with raglan sleeves. So you've got the raglan increases along the sleeves there. And that's so it's, this is the, going to be the back, and we work across um, the back and the shoulders, and it's a V at the front. And then you join it in the round and continue on. But that's going to take some time because the needles are so small and the yarn is so fine. So that's it. That's that's my knitting. Just a short bit of knitting bit for you. Um, right. So pl my plans, I haven't made any plans as, as to what I'm going to make in May. I thought I'm just going to see what inspiration strikes. Uh, I'm having a meet up very excitingly in on the 11th of May with the lovely Lorianne who's coming over from Oregon and she's staying with Judy who's running so and so and I think she's going to beautiful HQ to do some retreats and I think she might be going to see Andrea as well so I'm very jealous uh, but I'm meeting up with Lorianne on the 11th of May along with Sean from Kidnish Behaviour so I haven't seen haven't met Lorianne before I'm really looking forward to meeting her and I have haven't seen Sean for oh since before COVID, ages and ages ago, when I went to, I had a meet up at the Goldhawk Road with Sean and Rachel and a, and a few other people. Um, but I haven't seen her since then. So it would be absolutely lovely to catch up with them again. So there might be a little bit of fabric shopping, possibly, maybe. <laughs> but uh, if I can, I'll take you along, maybe get a little bit of footage and um, definitely show you if I've bought anything. But I hope you're all well and um I will catch up with you again very soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.